When I was a kid, I hated reading. I hated reading because it was something you had to do for school and you got graded on it and my grades are terrible. Uh, it wasn't, I didn't want to read what they told me to read in English class. I didn't want to be quizzed on it and I didn't want my intellectual defects to be discovered. My mother was a little worried about it. She signed me up for the Weekly Reader Club. And you gotta remember this is the 70s. It wasn't the kind of club where they had a clubhouse so you went to meetings there was a secret password. I got to pick books off of a long catalog and they would send me a book a week in the mail. Now this is kind of exciting because I was a little kid and mail was coming for me. So my mother was pretty clever. Maybe she made a mistake by letting me pick all my own titles, um, but I don't think so, because otherwise I wouldn't have read them. So what did I pick? Every single Charlie Brown book ever published. I spent probably three years going through every compilation of Peanuts comic strips that the Weekly Reader Book Club would send me. And then I had an experience when I was 13 years old. I had the measles. Now, I know to a lot of you it doesn't make any sense because I was vaccinated against the measles, so how could I possibly have the measles when I was 13? But there it was, me and the measles. And it was a time when we were riding from Pittsburgh up to Massachusetts. We're going to start a summer vacation, me with the measles. And of course, my parents, they don't want to like postpone a vacation. They gave me watership down and they tucked me in the back of our van and all I did was read that book, and it was fantastic. It helped that there was an animated cartoon version of Watership Down that came out later, but that wasn't what really got me hooked on books and reading. It was the experience of being immersed in this fictional world of the bunny rabbits and all their conflicts. And since then, I've had a different attitude reading writing. Now, if you look at me on YouTube, uh, I have this lecture about how language is a technology for improving the quality of our thinking. I've been studying reading. I've been writing. I got my PhD and I make my living as a scholar. It's a completely different way of thinking about it. And I want to share some of what I learned with you. Jim Rohn says that you are the average of the five people closest to you. And if I remember it correctly, it was my eighth grade English teacher that said reading a book is like having a conversation with the author in your imagination. When you choose a book, you're choosing an author or a character or an idea that you become closer to. The immersion in the book changes your thoughts through the language that you are um, I keep saying immersed in, through the language that you're engaging with, the story. I read mostly nonfiction, but through the words that are entering your brain, you begin to see things in the world differently. You recognize different things, you're looking for different things, and your thoughts, the way you think about the world, change. So if I read a book on sales, I'm thinking about sales. If I read a book on thermodynamics, I'm thinking about thermodynamics. And you don't have to worry about being graded. You don't have to um, take notes. You're not going to get a quiz. Let the words wash over you. You're going to get some of it. The way I do it now is audiobooks. I download a book. I listen to it when I'm in the car. Whenever I'm driving, I'm listening to an audiobook. And I choose a topic or an author that will help me with a problem that I'm working on in my life. Sometimes I just choose it because it's recommended. I got. Jonathan Haidt and his happiness hypothesis. I got one from graduate school that I don't recommend for anyone, but those people interested in entropy and physics, Bob Ayers helped get me through graduate school because thinking like Bob Ayers, being in an imaginary conversation with Bob Ayers helped me become a scholar. Well, the cool thing about today is we didn't have it in eighth grade. But I can actually have real conversations with the authors. Jonathan Haidt came to ASU. I sat in the second row. I got to meet him, have a conversation with him. And Bob Ayers, I met in New Hampshire at a conference. 
Now we get to actually write and have real conversations with some of the authors if we want to. Sometimes they'll write us back. Because you are the average of the five people closest to you, you can choose those people through the books that you read. Get the audiobook, let that wash over you, and if it's really good, something like, here's Joe Dispenza's, You Are the Placebo. I've never met Joe Dispenza, but because I've read his book, I feel like I know him. His ideas get into my brain, change the way I think. There's no quiz, there's no grade. I don't have to do anything or prove myself to anyone. But if I like the audiobook, I'll get the hard copy and I'll read it again and I'll read it again anytime I want to retrain my brain to think like that book. That's how I read now.